Dear students, welcome and thank you for tuning in to this video. I am Dr. Lyle Zorbi. In this video, I will be talking about how to obtain a nuclear medicine image as well as about the instrumentation used in order to obtain these images. I would like to explain the different imaging modalities in nuclear medicine. We have two categories. One of them is planar imaging and the second category is the emission computer tomography, which consists of the SPECT and PET. SPECT is a single, the single photon emission computer tomography and the PET refers to the positron emission tomography. So all the imaging modalities, the planar imaging, SPECT, and PET can be categorized into two groups. The first group is a planar imaging and the SPECT imaging, which uses radio tracers that are gamma emitters, while the PET, the positron emission tomography, uses radio tracers that emit positrons. So in general, how do we obtain a nuclear medicine image? Uh, first of all, we administer the radio pharmaceutical agent that is connected to a radioactive atom. We administer this material inside the body, then the radio pharmaceutical material concentrates in the desired location. And if you look at the image to the right, you can see that in the bladder part of the subject, we have this dark area where the radio pharmaceutical is concentrated, you know, been deposited out of the body through the the bladder and that's how you can see these in uh, planar radio radiography uh, for um, nuclear medicine imaging after we the radio so if we are uh, looking at the for the on the funk for all the of the function uh, of a you know biological process um, the radio pharmaceutical agent will be concentrated in that location. So if you are targeting to identify the functionality or function, some functionalities in the liver, you'll find that your radio pharmaceutical is concentrated in the liver or whatever the tissue that you are trying to uh, target. Then the nucleus of the radionuclide decays uh, to emit photons, um, either gamma rays or X-rays and um, then you can detect the photon using gam the gamma camera and this is the instrumentation used actually in nuclear medicine imaging that i will be talking about uh, it as well today so this is a quick overview about how to obtain nuclear medicine image uh, you start by administrating the radio the radio pharmaceutical or the radioactive um you know um agent you know uh, biological agent and then detecting the photons using the gamma camera so uh, the gamma camera actually consists uh, of the following um, so um, it it has a multi-hole uh, lead collimator and it has also um, 10 to 25 inch circular or square or rectangular sodium iodide uh, scintillation crystal and we're going to talk about it a little bit more uh, later on as well as um, uh, an array of photomultiplier tubes uh, on the cluster uh, on the crystal sorry then uh, a positioning logic network a pulse a height analyzer a gating circuit and a computer as shown in the figure here and I will be talking about the functionality of each of these components uh, in this video and in subsequent uh, videos as well so uh, to start with to about talking about the crystal um, so the scintillation crystal actually uh, it's called the scintillation detector and it's the most used uh, most commonly used actually uh, detector in nuclear medicine it is very sensitive to elect uh, more that it's more sensitive uh, to electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation than a gas filled detector similar to the one that we described in um, x-ray and ct scan uh, previously um, also uh, what happened in this uh, crystal is that it emits light photons uh, which we call scintillate uh, scintillate after depositing de after the deposition of energy in the crystal by ionizing radiation and it is usually a, a sodium um, iodide uh, with a thallium, thal thallium uh, doping um, and that is actually what what type what what is the com uh, composition of this uh, scintillation crystal that we have and you can see this um, crystal actually here um, uh, you know in in the image uh, it's this part here that's our um, scintillation crystal. 
uh, and you can see that the, and then we will go to talk about a little bit about the collimator oh, sorry this is the detector which is the pinky the pink uh, rectangle and this is the collimator um, that we're going to be describing in a bit and to what what is what is what is what does it do and why do we have it and then uh, we have the photo multiplier tubes uh, which are those this is this rectangle here and then we have preamplifier and then you have the amplifier amplification the pulse height analyzer the position analyzer and then you have the co uh, computer to s and to display that will process the data and then you can display your uh, nuclear medicine image so uh, if i i would like to uh, talk a little bit about the photo multiplier tube before we talk we talk about so we, we describe the detector which is the scintillation crystal and uh, I would like to talk a little bit about the PMT, which are the photomultiplier tubes. So these tubes here, so we have usually between 40 to 100 uh, photomultiplier tubes and um, in modern um, gamma cameras. And um, they are uh, they have photo cathode directly coupled to the det to detector or connected using plastic light guide in order to uh, process the photo the light that is um, produced by the crystal, and it's ultra sensitive to magnetic field. So uh, the light is so when the light is reflected inside, um, it, it, when the light is produced actually. Uh, because of the stimulation of the detector, um, remember that the crystal, the scintillation crystal, will absorb the ionized uh, radiation, and then it's going to generate light. The light will be channeled into the uh, photomultiplier tubes. So what happened with the photomultiplier tubes is that the light is reflected and channeled out and back into the crystal uh, through glass uh, plates, and is um, incident upon an array of photomultiplier you know that's that's how it it, it to the to be uh, going to the uh, pre-amplification and the amplifier and summation uh, assembly uh, and so one of the things that I would like to mention here is that as the light is going to be propagating um, you know and being ref channeled and reflected uh, in a zigzag form to multiply it and to uh, create more uh, electrical signal from uh, even the tiniest and smallest uh, light that is um, created by them or you know you know generated by the crystal after being exposed to the ionized radiation and uh, so these are the p parts of the uh, gamma camera now i would like to talk about the collimators uh, a little bit. So, the, in, why do we use collimators uh, in image, image formation? So, if because we are looking at uh, radioactive uh, imaging, or um, we would like to make sure that we are looking at only the location uh, from which the radiation is being generated, uh, which is the patient, and that's why we need to have collimators to block any radiation. Uh, that is coming uh, in an angle to the crystal and we would like to focus only on the um, perpendicular uh, you know um, generation generation of the medic the image or the sorry the radiation and that's why you can see here in this image to the right that with the collimator we are detecting only the vertical the uh, parallel um, radiation and the collimator is blocking anything that is coming with an angle to the crystal. So the crystal is not going to be excited uh, from anything that is not uh, immediately uh, beneath the um, crystal. So that's how we are looking into the why do we use collimator. So if we don't have the collimators, if you have two different sources, you will be having um, image you know, we have the signals from different locations and that's going to uh, create a blurriness and unspecificity in the image that we are uh, trying to detect so um, this is why we are using the collimators so we would like to make sure that we are looking at the image of a point source um, immediately that is in, in the look in the specific location 
uh, inside the subject. That's why we, because we would like to be able to identify that location precisely. Also, uh, the reasons behind the uh, collimator is to establish geometric relationship between the source and image. Uh, and so we are um, having a precise uh, location of where the radiation is coming from uh, from the subject, the spatial distribution, and especially. And also the kilometer have a major effect on gamma camera sensitivity, and that is the count rate. Um, and that's very important because uh, as opposed to the uh, X-ray and CT scans, which were uh, reliant on the uh, attenuation, detection of the attenuation of the signal. Here we would like just to make sure that we are detecting photons, uh, which we say that which, which we um, you know represent we represent as the count rate. So kilometers, um, they 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 affect the count rate uh, because we're going to see only them um, photons coming uh, directly or parallel to the uh, crystal and also the spatial resolution. And usually, uh, collimators, they started be they the first models of these um, cameras, they have circular collimators. Uh, because of the, the nature of the circular collimators, we were missing some of the information. And now we have multiple uh, different uh, designs of these parallel collimators to improve um, on the count rate uh, and what I mean by count rate is the number of photons detected by the crystal and also it improved the spatial resolution. Uh, so the images are much more clear. So um, we have different types of kilometers. We have uh, four types of kilometers. So the most often our you know, used one is the parallel hole kilometer, which is this one here to the top left. And um, the, what is unique about this Collimator is that uh, the image is um, the same size as the object, uh, so we are not having any magnification or um, minification of the object. Of the ob ob object. So this is the why we're using the parallel hole. And then we have also uh, something called converging and diverging uh, collimators, and those are the two. Um, at the bottom of the image that, uh, that we are looking at. So in converging uh, kilometers, uh, what we have, we have a focal point that is below the crystal and um, we, the uh, kilometer, the lead, the lead uh, structure is angled toward that focal point, which makes the, uh, which allows us to create an image that is bigger than the object. So this is used for magnification in nuclear medical med medical imaging and also the diverging um, it's the opposite of the converging the structure of it is opposite and we have a focal point behind the crystal and these collimators are used to minify an object and also we have the th one of the um, um, types of collimators called the pinhole collimator which is this one here top right and this uh, collimator is actually unique because it has a hole and it is this hole here allows us to magnify and minify the object based on the distance from the object so how far this structure is away or close from the object um, the image made is either bigger or smaller and these collimators actually are used in order to improve um, on the spatial resolution. Uh, I'm not going to go t into more details about it, but that is uh, basically what, how, why it's used and how we can use it. So um, if you move this collimator up or down away from the object, you either have a magnification or minification, uh, but also you can control the resolution. And that is very important. And uh, one of the usages for this uh, pinhole collimator is actually to look at very, very small objects, but with high resolution. And that's why we are, that's the, the application of this kind of collimators. So in summary, uh, about the collimators, the collimator must be matched to energy of the radionuclide. And uh, also the efficiency changes little with distance to source 
which is the patient and also the resolution falls off quickly with distance to source so we need to keep these in mind when we are uh, designing um, you know um, gamma cameras uh, for um, nuclear medicine imaging uh, thank you for watching and till next video bye